Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about different and useful pages that you can do in your bullet journal. This video is dedicated to the beginners to bullet journaling that want to get familiar with the different pages and if you haven't watched my last video about how to start a bullet journal, I'm going to link it in the cards and in the description. But before we start, this video is brought to you with the help of the Let's Journal store. There you can find a lot of good quality and affordable stationery and they sent me some products to use in this video so thank you so much for that and I'm very excited to use them. The first item is these wooden stamp letters. They are adorable and in terms of height they measure two squares in the Leuchtturm notebook. The next item is the Zebra Mild Liners Friendly Color Pack. I made a post on Instagram showing you these colors compared with the other Zebra Mod liners and this pack is probably my favorite so far because the colors are really soft and they are colorful at the same time. Then we have the set of 12 milk liners. In the store you can buy them in singular if you don't want the whole pack, but because I was really curious about them I ordered the whole pack. I have mixed feelings about these markers and I can do a whole video comparing them with the Zebra Mild Liners if you want me to, but they are really good quality and I'm happy to try them. Next we have this affordable tree stamp. I just fell in love with this drawing when I saw it on her store and I knew that I had to have it to make a theme with it in the future. And last but not least, we have these monthly calendar stamps that are really really minimal and perfect for when you don't want to write the entire name of the month. And I think they would look very cute in a future log. Thank you so much Let's Journal Store for sending me these, I am going to leave a link to the store in the description and all the items mentioned as well. The first page that I'm going to show you that has been really useful for me in the past months is a sleep log. I'm writing sleep log at the top of the page using the wooden stamps and my archival ink pad that is going to be linked in the description as well. And in this page you can track how many hours you slept and from what hour to what hour you slept. I started using a sleep log because in my job I do rotating shifts, so for me it's really important to track my sleep to see if I'm sleeping enough and when I'm tired the most. And I can see that by tracking when I take naps. For this page I did the hours of the day at the top, first am and then pm, and on the side I did the days of the month. For every page that I'm showing you in this video, there are other layouts that you can choose from, but I chose the easier ones to do and to understand, so if you want to try it, it's not that complicated. In my sleep log, I normally use two colors, a lighter one for my sleep and a darker one for my work hours. Here I'm using a lilac milk liner for my sleep and a purple milk liner for my work hours. This way I can see clearly how many hours I worked and slept. The next page is the brain dump and summary page. I did this page for the first time in September and I really like the space and the functions of the page. I'm writing November at the top using the green milk liner. As you can see, they are really good to do calligraphy with. And below the title, I'm doing a section for the brain dump and another section for the summary, using the wooden stamps for the titles. In the brain dump section, I normally write everything that I want to try to do throughout the month but they don't have a specific week or day to get done. But I just wrote it here so I don't forget. And in the summary section I wrote how the month went and what happened and how I felt throughout the month. So when I flip back to this page I can see how the month was and how I felt about it. I use this section more to do a review of how I felt in terms of stress and productivity and I also write my intentions and what I want to change for the upcoming month. I'm finishing up the page using a Muji gel pen to give some dimension to the title. The next page is the monthly highlights page. I did the days on the left side of the pages, 15 days on each page, giving two lines for each day and writing the days with the Tumble Fudenosuke hard tip pen. On the bottom I wrote November highlights using the wooden stamps. I did this page back in April and it's mainly to practice gratitude or to write what happened on each day. 
I used it as a way for me to write a brief description of how the day went and how I felt about it. Kind of like the summary page that I did before, but instead of writing a description at the end of the month, in this page you write it daily. It's also a good start if you want to start journaling on a daily basis. To give the page some color, I used a light blue milk liner to highlight every other line on the page. If you can probably tell, the ink from the stamps bleeds through and ghosts a lot on the other side of the pages. This is because of the thickness of the notebook. I'm using a Lockstone 1917 and the pages are really thin. And if you watch one of my latest bullet journal setups videos where I use this ink pad for the calendar stamps, the ink doesn't bleed through because my Moleskin sketchbook pages are really thick. I recommend that if you use stamps with this particular ink pad, to be careful on the pressure you apply on the stamps. Next we have a master to-do list. This page is one of the most useful ones for me, especially when I'm on vacation or on holiday and I have a lot of free days to be productive. I like to divide my master to-do list into three categories. Personal, where I write everything that I want to do that involves my health or friends and personal stuff in general. Business, that are things that I have to do for YouTube, bullet journal and Instagram. And home, because there's always stuff to organize and clean around the house. And if I have time, I like to take care of those things as well. I use the stamps for the titles and the red zebra mod liner to do the different sections. To finish up the page, I stamp the trees on the corner and the November stamp below it. I did a quick fix on the trees because I still don't know how to stamp very well. On the side I did a savings page. I actually never did a savings page in my bullet journal because I prefer to have all my finances on my computer, but this is a page that I'm going to do for 2020 just to track my savings. I used the letter stamps on the bottom and for the actual page I'm doing a table using the yellow zebra mild liner for the headers. The table is going to have a section for the weeks, another one for the amount, and one for the total. How this page works is you write all of the weeks for the year on the week section, and on the amount section you write the amount that you want to save or saved that week. And the total is just for you to have an idea of how much money you saved so far. I think like this layout is the most basic one to keep you on track, but I don't know if I'm going to do this exact layout for my actual savings page. At the bottom I'm doing a space for you to write how much money you saved in total using the Tombow Furenosuke pen. The next page is a page that I don't see a lot of people doing, but that I feel like it's really important, which is the accomplishments page. I talked a little bit more in depth on my how to bullet journal for beginners video, but this page is mainly for you to write everything that you accomplished throughout the year, that you are proud of or that you want to remember in the future. I do this page every time I started a new bullet journal, so I can write every little memory that I would like to remember once I flip back to this journal. It's really important to celebrate every little victory, and in this page is where you can write all of them. In this page I gave you some fictional examples like hitting 5k on Instagram, doing a trip to Italy or buying a house, but every little victory that you accomplish should be on this page. The next page is one of the pages that I never did in my bullet journal but that I do on a random notebook every time that I have a lot to do and I need to prioritize my tasks, which is the Eisenhower Decision Matrix page. This page consists of having four quadrants and prioritizing your tasks. I will have a video that explains this page way better than I'm explaining right now in the description, but you basically divide the page into four quadrants, I'm doing the headers for each using the orange zebra mod liner. At the top you have the important and non-important sections and on the side you have the urgent and not urgent sections. And I believe that I did the sections on the wrong sides, but they work well anyways. 
in these quadrants you write your tasks by deciding which tasks are urgent and important, urgent but not important, important but not urgent, and not urgent and not important. If you want to know more about this page, please check the link in the description. Next, I have a page that I actually did in my November setup video, which is the November overview page. I use the tree stamps at the bottom of the page for decoration and the letter stamps for the title of the page. And for the accent color, I'm using the blue zebra mild liner. In this page, I like to have four different sections. A task section to write everything that I want to do throughout the month, a goal section to write everything that I want to accomplish, a ideas section where I keep some of the things that I want to do, kind of like a brain dump, and a summary section that I explained what is for earlier in the video. By doing this page, you have all of your notes and to-dos all in one place. The next page is a bucket list page. This is also one of those pages that I like to do when I have a lot of free time or I'm on holiday. I use this dark pink milk liner for the title of the page and I'm using the stamp letters for the different categories. On the bucket list page, I like to have four different categories. Things to do where I put normally my tasks for the holiday, things to try, normally food and activities, to buy, kind of works like a wish list or a shopping list for the holiday, and things to see, whether are movies, books, monuments, etc. This is a good page to use when you're on vacation and you want to check out a bunch of stuff so you don't forget anything. And last but not least, this is a page that I do the most in my journal and that I think it's super useful, is a trackers page. I used to have a mood tracker and a habit tracker separated, but I decided to combine them and have only one page which I called trackers. Here I have some habits that I want to incorporate and do more in my daily life, and some moods and feelings to see if they are frequent and how they affect my life. The trackers that I have here are meditation, read, workout, water, 8 hours of sleep, if I was productive, self-care, journaling and eat healthy. I use the stamp letters for the title and the light blue milk liner for the headers on the days. Alright, so these are all the pages that I have for you today. Let me know in the comments which page is the most important one in your bullet journal. I would love to know that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much to Let's Journal Store and don't forget to check out the links in the description. I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!